When my mom gave birth to twins via C-section on a sweltering summer morning in Phoenix, Arizona, I was born first. <laughs> Based on the sizable dent I still have in the top of my head, I suspect that as soon as an exit to the outside world appeared, my twin sister Kayla gave my soft, stupid head a nice swift kick in that direction so she could finally be alone. <clears throat> However, her peace didn't last for long. She got exactly one minute to herself before being dragged into the big, bright world after me. Now, I've had to answer a lot of twin questions over the years, so let's just get these out of the way. We're fraternal, not identical. I'm the older one by one minute. No, we don't have some weird secret twin language or ESP. If you pinch her, I won't feel it, but you're still welcome to try. And lastly, I don't know how I know which one I am when I wake up in the morning. I just do. Although Kayla and I look more like sisters than twins today, when we were young, even our close family members couldn't tell us apart. Of course, it didn't help that my mom dressed us alike. When it came to our matching outfits, I always had the blue or purple version, from my leggings to my jelly shoes to the plastic glasses that I wore. And Kayla had all the same things, but in red or pink. As the blue twin, you might assume that meant I was the tomboy. But it was actually Kayla who fit that role more than I did. To this day, she still never pierced her ears or painted her nails. Me, on the other hand, I begged my mom to let me do both. But I enjoyed us dressing alike. Wearing the same outfit linked us together. But the different colors helped me preserve a tiny piece of me amidst that bigger we. After being in the same preschool class together, my mom decided it would be a good idea to put us in different classes for kindergarten. One day, when both of our classes were at recess, Kayla's teacher, Mrs. Orff, called her class to line up while my class continued to play. Mrs. Orff soon approached me, thinking I was Kayla, and chastised me for not lining up to go inside. Since I was painfully shy and horribly afraid of getting into trouble, my eyes instantly filled with tears, and I stood there blubbering, unable to explain myself, until Mrs. Orff saw Kayla was already in line. When we got home from school that day and I told my mom what had happened, she immediately went out and bought two small enamel pins, one of the letter J and one of the letter K. How she found these pins so quickly, decades before the invention of Amazon or even the internet, I'll never know. But for several years after, Kayla and I wore those letters pinned to our clothes every day. During our first dance class, I was scared to go in. The newness of it was too overwhelming. So I stayed in the lobby with our mom while Kayla bravely trudged in alone and showed me there was nothing to be afraid of. When we started gymnastics a few years later, our roles reversed. What was intimidating to my sister looked like a lot of fun to me. So she stayed on the observation deck with our mom while I headed into class and showed her there was nothing to fear. By the time we got to middle school, we developed our own particular brand of dorky. We both still sported the thick bangs that seemingly started at the back of our heads that we'd had since we were toddlers. We didn't wear makeup and usually let our hair air dry into whatever garish shape our cowlicks fancied that day. Our clothes came from thrift stores and Kmart as our family was barely scraping by. Late one night during a summer slumber party at a friend's house, Kayla and I had decided to finally head to bed while a few of the other girls stayed up. We nestled into our sleeping bags in the darkened living room facing one another. Soon enough, we heard the girls we thought were our friends in the next room making fun of us for shopping at Savers and still playing with Barbies. Neither Kayla or I moved a muscle or said a word. We didn't want them to know that we were awake or had heard what they'd said, because that would be letting them win somehow. But our eyes connected in the darkness, and that's when I think we both knew that it would always be us against the world. 
We couldn't trust our friends the way we trusted each other. That pact would soon be tested when we reached the angsty hormone hell of high school. <laughs> what many people don't understand about being twins is that you are compared relentlessly your entire lives by family, friends, strangers, teachers, kids at school, everyone. Who's prettier? Who's smarter? Who's more popular? Who's the better dancer? I still remember the day Kayla smugly told me how her boyfriend's little sister and her friends had called her the pretty twin and me the mutilated twin. There was a wall in our living room where my mom displayed all of our awards, which ranged from winning poetry contests to dancer of the month to presidential physical fitness awards. <laughs> Kayla's side and my side were almost identical because as much as people like to compare us, they were also terrified to pick one of us and not the other. <laughs> when we made the cheerleading squad, we were picked as co-captains. When we taught little kids classes at our dance studio, we taught together. Our senior year of high school, we were both selected as dancer of the year. In high school, we had all the same classes, all the same friends, and all the same hobbies. The only time we weren't together was when we were sleeping or in the bathroom. At a time when everyone was trying to figure out their identity, we were constantly being lumped together as the twins and we resented it. This lifetime of constant comparison had groomed Kayla and I to see each other as adversaries, not sisters. So during that golden hour between when we got home from school and when one of our parents came home from work, a time that most kids use to watch TV or do homework, we used that time to fight. Anything could set us off, including nothing at all. One day when we were doing homework at the dining room table, I suddenly picked up my can of soda and poured it all over her calculus homework. I don't know why I did it, but simply hating her was usually a good enough reason. In response, she took her warm toaster strudel, slathered in gooey icing and oozing its lava-like filling, and smeared it all over my shirt. <laughs> Things quickly escalated from there, like they did most days, and we slipped into our usual routine of shoving each other against the wall and the furniture, slapping and hitting one another, yanking each other's hair, and on special occasions, even chasing each other with scissors. <laughs> Though the scissors were usually more props than weapons. My sister and I did our best to hide our dysfunctional relationship from the outside world. At school, at dance, at relatives' houses, we were perfect angels. But at home, we were terrors. We thought the only way to build ourselves up was to tear each other down. On top of that, our parents were going through a nasty divorce. We were full of rage and sadness about it, and we took it out on each other. Because even amidst all that hostility, something inside each of us still knew that we were safe with each other in ways that we weren't with anyone else. When we finally graduated high school, we could not wait to get away from each other. We chose rival universities two hours apart. For the first time in my life, I was no longer part of the two-headed monster known as the twins. I was finally just Janelle. I had my own friends, my own hobbies, my own life. I wish I could tell you that by the time we graduated college, we had grown out of our bitter rivalry, but I can't. When our dad took us on a cruise for our graduation, Kayla and I shared a cabin together. A few days into the cruise, we had just returned from a shore excursion that had included an open bar. We'd been picking at each other all day, and too much drinking had escalated our hostility toward one another. I was sitting on the floor of our room in front of a full-length mirror doing my makeup for dinner when Kayla started talking shit about my boyfriend. This was particularly stupid because my boyfriend had actually been my sister's friend first, and I had met him through her. <laughs> However, my sister was single at the time and jealous I had a boyfriend and she didn't. 
She needed to tear him down so that it didn't feel like I was winning. I was still pretty drunk from the shore excursion, and she knew exactly how to push my buttons. I warned her to knock it off several times, but she just kept going, picking, pushing. Finally, I reached my breaking point. I couldn't bear to hear her say one more word. I had to shut her up. So I turned around and punched her in the face. <laughs> what the actual fuck, she screams. She shoved me hard against the vanity with a loud thud, sunscreen and cosmetics crashing to the floor, the hard edge of the vanity digging into my lower back. You bitch, I yelled as I ran at her, tackling her onto the bed, where we wrestled and slapped one another, trying to take control over the other. Suddenly there was a loud pounding at the door. We both froze and looked at each other, panicked. Since I was clearly the hotter mess of the two of us, I retreated to the bathroom and locked the door, just like the good old days. <laughs> Kayla straightened her clothes, smoothed down her hair, took a deep breath, and opened the door. It was cruise ship security. <laughs> From the bathroom, I could hear a man with a deep, gruff voice tell my sister a neighbor had reported a fight in progress occurring in our cabin. <laughs> a fight? My sister said innocently. Oh no, we were just having a heated discussion. I imagine that she smiled at him sweetly here. Well, regardless, I need to see the other party to make sure everyone's okay. Sheepishly, I cracked the bathroom door, just enough to show my face, and said that I was fine. Don't make me come back, he warned us. <laughs> we won't, we said in unison. A minute or so later, there was another pounding on the door. This time it was our dad, who had the cabin next to us, and to be frank, was tired of our shit. <laughs> Any hopes he'd had that we'd finally grown out of this were dashed. What the hell is going on in here, he yelled. He then proceeded to lecture us about how lucky we were that cruise ship security hadn't just dropped us and our luggage off at the end of the dock and told us, good luck getting home. I was so ashamed. I couldn't bring myself to go to dinner that night and face my dad. Instead, my sister went like nothing had happened, and I hid in the cabin. Our relationship didn't start to mellow until Kayla and I reached our 30s. By then, we'd been living very separate lives for almost a decade, and weren't just living in different cities, but different states. It seemed as though the greater the distance between us and the more breathing room we had to be ourselves, the closer we actually became. Our lives had become different enough that trying to compare them no longer made sense. I also saw a big change in Kayla when she met her husband. He was a steady, stabilizing force in her life that she hadn't had before. She became calmer, more confident, less volatile. She drank less. She could make mistakes and be human without fearing that he would run off or dump her like other men had. When they got engaged, I was thrilled for them, but I was also surprised by the deep feeling of abandonment that surged through me. I was single and had no desire for children. I had accepted that my life wasn't going to meet society's expectations of two kids, a dog, and a white picket fence. But taking the path less traveled without my sister now seemed daunting. But I proudly stood next to her at her wedding as her maid of honor and gave a toast to their everlasting love and happiness. <clears throat> it was perhaps the first day in Kayla's life that was solely about her, and I was so happy to be a part of it. Love is at its best when it surprises us, teaches us, and inspires us to grow, and that's what she and her husband had. As we approach 40, Kayla and I are perhaps more different than we've ever been. She's married and raising two young kids in the quiet suburbs of Chicago, I'm single, happily, child-free, and enjoy traveling, performing, and adventuring. But we're also closer than we've ever been. We usually visit each other twice a year, text weekly, talk monthly. My nephews video call their Auntie Jano often. When Kayla and I talk about the cruise ship incident, 
we laugh so hard we cry. <laughs> After years and years of tearing each other down, we finally arrived at a place where we can lift each other up. We're no longer competitors, just sisters. And even though we may no longer share the same womb or house or state or life, I can still look her in the eye like I did at that sleepover and know with absolute certainty that it's never going to be me alone against the world. It's always going to be us. Give it up for Janelle Drumright. <laughs>